It's so easy to get discouraged because you don't feel like you're going anywhere. As a worship ministry, you don't feel like you can get traction. If I just had this singer, if I just had this guitar player, but the thing about building a worship ministry is that it is not a sprint, it's a marathon. Hey, it's Dave Dolphin at practicalworshipblog.com sharing ideas, tips, and practical advice for the everyday worship leader. And recently I got this question from Dina and it says, I am very interested to know what your approach is to musicians, specifically singers, who are currently on a worship team that are not qualified. In the past, I have inherited worship team members who have no ability or very minimal skills, but the previous music director decided to put them on the stage. And I had a bad experience with requiring the entire team to re-audition, and it resulted into many families leaving the church altogether. Do you have any alternative solutions or suggestions? Well, Dina, first off, I want to thank you for being vulnerable and asking that question because I don't believe that you're alone. What I want to do over the next couple of minutes is I want to answer the question that I think is behind the question, and then I'll answer the question directly. I think it's really easy for us to focus on the now, on the present. If we're going to make comparisons, we're going to do it over a small span of time. We're going to compare yesterday to today, or for our worship leader, we're going to compare last weekend to this weekend, and then when we don't see much difference between the two, we get discouraged. I also think it's really easy to think that it's always going to be this way. If it's really, really good right now, we make the assumption that it's always going to be this good, which that's in correct, but also if it's really bad right now, we make the assumption that it's always going to be this bad. But you know how you measure the height of your kids on the wall in your home? It doesn't seem like they're growing because you see them every single day, but when you compare the mark from like three or four months ago, you realize they've grown four inches. Or if you're one that likes to journal, it's only when you read entries from maybe like a year or two ago that you might actually see the personal growth in your life. Or maybe you're someone who's 40 and you don't think you have anything significant to offer in terms of of a mentorship to someone else until you sit down and start talking to someone who's 20. I think a lot of times we just sit and wait for the superstar to come to our church. There's a famous country band that is from our town, from our area, and the first couple of weeks that I was on staff here at Trinity, their drummer and his family visited our church. And who wouldn't want the drummer of a famous country band to be on their worship team? So you bet I called them and you bet I emailed them. Now, no surprise, that didn't work out. But when you look at other churches, especially large churches, it's easy to think that their superstars have always been that way. But what they would tell you is that you have to grow your own. Take someone that has the raw talent and that is willing and invest the time and the resources into that person and then see where they are in six months or a year. An example from our church is that our band plays to a click track and it seems like drummers have the hardest time getting used to playing with a click if they don't have any experience. Now, I have a theory about that, and I have a video about that theory. I'll put that up here in the YouTube card right over here and also in the description down below. But the point is that the chances of me finding a drummer that already has the experience playing with a click track is pretty low. But if I have someone that's willing to put in the time and I'm willing to invest in that person, give that person six months or a year, now that person's a superstar playing with a click track. It's hard to have a long-term mindset, but think of building a worship ministry not as a sprint, but as a marathon. You don't have to have it all together on day one, and you might not fully obtain your vision for the worship ministry for a year or more, but that's okay. But don't underestimate the power of small gains that accrue over time. Now, to answer your question specifically, when I came on staff five years ago, I did exactly what you suggested. I re-auditioned the members of the worship team. Now, the focus wasn't necessarily on can you serve on my team? It was more how are we going to use you? Because a singer that sounds like Adele, I'm going to use differently than a singer that sounds like Sarah McLaughlin. A guitar player that sounds like The Killers, I'm going to use differently than a guitar player that sounds like Eric Clapton. Now that worked well in my situation, but I could see in a different church, in a different context, that that could blow up in your face. And if that did happen to you, I could imagine that you'd be a little trigger shy to try it again. If you have people on your worship team and you don't think that you should re-audition them, or ask them to step down and they have the right heart and they want to serve, maybe just not the skill set, then I would encourage you to spend time and energy and resources pouring into them over the next year in training them. If it's primarily your singers, maybe you connect with a larger church down the road with someone that has a lot of experience in vocal training. Maybe bring that person in to do a workshop for your people at your church. Or maybe take your rehearsal schedule and separate out the band and the vocals. Have a specific rehearsal just for the vocals. 
Not only is this going to make the vocals better over time, but it shows your team that you value good vocals. You may have to accept your team for where they are right now, and there's a lot of great reasons to do that, but it's okay to have the expectation that you want them to improve on their craft over time. It's okay to be here, but it's not okay to stay here forever. Now, churches are so relational. What seems like maybe a really small decision can have a huge effect. When I think of churches, I think of Duck Commander and Duck Dynasty because you can't fire your uncle for not making the reads, but the problem is if he doesn't make the reads, eventually there's not going to be a business or a job for him to go to. Working with family and church is a family is a delicate balance. And if there's anything I've learned in transitioning from being in the business world and now leading a ministry in the church is that you have to focus on small movements and small gains, but small gains add up to significant changes over the course of a year or two. Well, here at Practical Worship, we love sharing ideas and tips and practical advice for the everyday worship leader with videos just like this one. So if you haven't already, consider subscribing to the channel. We also just released a small little ebook called 20 Things I Wish I Knew 20 Years Ago. It's the advice that I've learned over the last 20 years of doing music ministry. And you can download it right now for free at practicalworshipblog.com.